Thank you. Um, as we at our last meeting talked about uh, the, the transition alignment and what we were looking at with our math goals, I had referenced that uh, our numeracy work group was at a point where we believed they were ready to make a recommendation for the uh, um, secondary math materials. And uh, Dr. Irving tonight is here to walk you through the process that, that we used um, in getting to this uh, agenda item. Um, Mr. Faflake has been unable to sleep for days with the anticipation of the, the new math materials, so um, please don't disappoint him tonight, if you would. <laughs> well, good evening. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna fall out of my chair like Mr. Fafflick, but I can tell you that I am extremely, <laughs> extremely excited that we are at a point that the numeracy work group is ready to make a recommendation related to our secondary core math curriculum. To give you a little background on how we came to this point, this visual we've shared a couple of times, but our numeracy work group was charged with three main things. We wanted them to analyze what our data says pre-K through 12. That was critical if we were going to really be able to create a plan that's going to help us achieve what we need to do to prepare all of our students to be college and career ready. Next, we asked them to assess where our gaps are. And based upon that assessment, to then begin to make recommendations on next steps. One of the things that has been taking place is looking at curriculum for secondary. That came about with the analysis of the data, that it was important that we identified a curriculum that would align our system from <coughs> elementary, middle to high. And so this pilot process actually started last spring. It included two pilot periods. And when I say two pilot periods, I'm referring to all of the pilot teachers that participated in this process were asked to pilot a curriculum for one period and then a second curriculum for a second pilot period so that they could compare those two different curriculum pieces for us. We had pilot teachers at 15 of the 18 middle schools, as well as pilot teachers from all of our comprehensive high schools. This was also another critical piece because we wanted to ensure that we had teachers that taught from early in your career to very seasoned teachers. So we had a range of teaching experiences but also we wanted to know that we had representation from buildings from all across our district and that we had pilots occurring in classrooms with students that were receiving class within a class support. So students that were receiving that ELL support that we just heard about as well as students with dis disabilities. All of our pilot um, or our middle school pilots included four different curriculums. And so our pilot teachers were piloting at least two of those curriculums there, as well as at the high school, we had four different curriculums that were being piloted at that level. I can say early in the process, there were folks that thought there was going to be a particular curriculum that came to the surface that was going to be recommended, but really we didn't know where this was going to lead us. And so that's why this process of vetting the curriculum based upon many, many things that were taking place that I'm gonna share with you was very, very important. So during this pilot process, the numeracy work group continued to analyze what our data was saying, what our needs were, what we currently had in place, but also what gaps we had present. They met with the focus groups ongoing. Focus groups included those pilot teachers, but it also included other math teachers that could share with them what were some of the challenges they were currently facing and being able to provide instruction to their students with the current curriculum pieces that we had. They met with department chairs. 
They also met with administrators from those buildings where pilots were taking place because those administrators were in those classrooms and they were able to observe what instruction looked like and how teachers were able to readily use the resources that were provided to them as well as the professional development support during this process. They also had parents involved in the focus groups. And this was important also because our parents provide valuable input on what are some of the current challenges that they see with students related to our math curriculum, but also able to share with us what they hoped we would be able to be able to do to better support their kiddos. The numeracy work group studied that survey feedback. There were surveys that were administered to our middle school and high school pilot teachers. And so th the surveys were based upon what, based upon the feedback that those pilot teachers gave us, based upon a criteria that our MTSS district leadership team provided for us to look at. Our MTSS district leadership team had also said that these are things that we consider to be non-negotiables in looking at curriculum, so it's important that you're looking at these type of things. So our numeracy work group was able to analyze that survey data and compare it to what other feedback we were receiving. This particular visual just gives a snapshot of some things that were taking place during this, this vetting process. That numeracy work group, I failed to mention, was a group that wasn't just comprised of middle school and high school teachers. That numeracy work group was comprised of elementary teachers also. Because if we're truly talking about that elementary middle to high alignment, it was important that we heard from elementary teachers that this is what we are needing or this is what, if you're going to be considering, how this will align to what we currently have in place. So that work group was looking at, again, the survey feedback. It was looking at feedback from our district leadership team. It was looking at um, the pros and cons of what those pilot teachers were saying, that these are the pros and cons for each of these particular curriculum pieces. And they compared that to what we had identified as the needs related to our student data and the feedback from even those non-pilot teachers of what they stated, this is what we need to be able to better instruct our students. So after this process was completed in recent weeks, there was one curriculum that stood out amongst all the others. It stood out not only in the feedback that we received from focus groups, it stood out based upon the pros and cons that those pilot teachers through this process, and it stood out based upon the analysis of the curriculum in comparison to what our state, state standards indicate and what our Engage New York curriculum looks like for our elementary students. And so that's where we are. That's where we're at this evening, and that's why I'm a little giddy, because I'm pretty excited. We are recommending, when I say we, meaning the curriculum team as well as the work group, that we move from, move from these current curriculum pieces that we have at the middle school level. Our middle school teachers are using these curricular pieces to instruct our core math for sixth, seventh, and eighth. The challenge is that these particular curriculum pieces are not aligned with our standards. And so because of that, there is the opportunity that we are missing some pieces for instruction because of the disalignment with our, with our standards. We're recommending to move away from this to move towards the Carnegie Math Series for sixth, seventh, and eighth. This particular curriculum we've identified is aligned with our state standards. It is aligned with what we currently have in place at elementary. And it would replace those other texts that were on that previous slide. We're also recommending to move away from these particular resources that we have in place currently for Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. With these particular, specifically the Algebra Mind, one of the areas of 
challenges that came out of our feedback from our, our stakeholders is that our students don't have access to textbooks. And so it makes it very difficult for them when they are going home to complete homework and expected to continue working on skills that are being taught in the classroom and not having that resource readily available for our students. We are asking to move away from that to move towards Carnegie for Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. With Carnegie, I've mentioned the alignment, but also it does provide a consumable textbook for all of our students for each of those courses. What's really great about this consumable textbook is that it's a traditional textbook, but it also provides workspace for students to do note taking that they can write down their notes right there in their textbook as a teacher is providing that direct instruction or as they're doing group activities and partner activities in the classroom. And to actually be able to take that textbook with their written notes in it home to be able to also use for their, their homework because their, the homework exercises and activities are also built into that text. So that is definitely one of the um, things that stood out from our stakeholders that they really liked about Carnegie in addition to the other, other pieces that stood out in the data analysis. We are recommending to keep these other resources at the high school level. These are our um, text, textbooks for advanced coursework like AP classes, our stat classes, and college algebra. Those would not go away. We would recommend keeping those particular resources there. And so as we think about Carnegie, I've mentioned the, the textbook, but it is also a blended learning. And blended learning, as Carnegie describes it, is that we have textbooks, but it also provides an online resource for our students, and I'll talk about our teachers also, but for our students, an opportunity for them to be able to continue to practice skills that they're working on in class, and for teachers to be able to use that online resource to monitor and support students in the classroom. This online resource can be used not only in the classroom, but students can log on to it and use outside of the class. And so we're going to show just a brief clip. Imagine providing students with one-on-one -on -one instruction to help identify each of their individual strengths and weaknesses when it comes to critical math skills. That's exactly what Mathia X allows you to do. Developed by Carnegie Learning and proven to increase learning outcomes, Mathia X offers students the best math in the galaxy, presented through interactive manipulatives and exploratory tools that make math fun. From day one, students will be able to learn using real-world lessons and step-by-step -step examples that will allow them to ask for hints if they get stuck, as well as delivering the exact content and amount of practice needed to become a math master. Mathia X will also show students their progress along the way, so they know exactly what skills they still need to work on in order to complete the course. Rather than simply gauging right and wrong answers, the program stores and analyzes every keystroke, adapting the content based on each step of the problem to map the student's thought process according to their answers. Assessment is part of the learning process, providing students with more time focused on learning. Mathia X is so personalized that no two content paths are the same. Through the most precise differentiated instruction and embedded assessment, Mathia X works to develop areas identified as weaknesses, helps students master new concepts, and provides predictive reports for teachers that project student performance. Unprecedented learning outcomes are within reach. See how on our website. So this is just a little bit of a snapshot of the online resource available to our students. And again, the online piece is something they can access in the classroom, but if they, um, they can also access it outside of the classroom. As well as you may have heard there, data then that our teachers would have access to to be able to guide other um, instruction in the classroom. 
also with the online resources, there is a bank of resources for our teachers. And this was another area that the pilot teachers spoke very highly of, the, the access to the resources for them to be able to not only have their teacher textbooks, but to be able to look at bank of other activities and lessons to be able to support individual students on different skills that they're working on in class. With these particular resources, um, we, I mean, it was just overwhelming in the comments from our teachers that spoke very highly of it. I mean, they talked about the strength of, of the <laughs> curriculum, the strength of the resources available, also that they like the ease of how the resources not only for them to use, but for their students to use. And that's just a snapshot of some of the comments that were pulled out of the feedback of the surveys. I don't have a slide here, but your next slide on your packet does indicate that if you were to approve the purchase of Carnegie, that we have already begun to develop our rollout plan. And that would include a kickoff to our teachers during our April in service which is just right around the corner. But we also would offer some optional professional development throughout the summer. But we know that there are gonna be teachers that are excited to come to that summer PD, but may not have the availability because of other plans. And that's okay, because even if they're not able to come over the summer, we have a plan on how we can address that when they come back in August for teacher report week. We also would provide, or Carnegie would provide us with what's called instructional leader workshops. And think of this much of like a trainer or trainer model because although Carnegie is an expert on their curriculum, the goal is that we build capacity within our own district to be able to continue professional development. And so they would help us and our instructional leaders be able to get caught up on what we need to do so we can begin to provide that professional development ongoing for our teachers. The ongoing coaching support is just that, that Carnegie would come in and be able to help support us in being in classrooms and meeting with teachers, helping teachers plan, helping teachers, as especially it's very important when we first get started with this, if teachers have those questions that we have those experts here that could help us problem solve some of those things. So that's the ongoing coaching support during the first year. And then the last piece that we are working on is the ongoing family support. It's important that we have a plan on how we're going to introduce this to our families also. I mean, we're excited about it. We have a plan for our teachers for implementation, but because there are, there's this bank of resources, it's also important that our families know how they can access it and what's available for their, their kiddos when they're at home working also. So we will be doing, hopefully, if approved tonight, ongoing family support for, for our families also. And so lastly, I just want to end with that there has been an extensive amount of time that has gone through really researching what our needs are related to math <coughs> and what we need to begin to do, add to, or do differently so that we are cre creating a cohesive alignment from elementary to middle to high. And through this process, engaging many stakeholders from all levels of our system, as well as family members coming in, that we believe we have identified a math curriculum that we would like to recommend for adopting, excuse me, adopting for our middle schools and high school in order to begin to roll out very soon. Questions you might have? We do, Ms. Akins, okay. Well, it's more of a, some comments than questions, but maybe there'll be a few questions in there. But I think that slide you showed with the middle school, um, what middle schools are using right now for math. That, when you talk to middle school math teachers, which I do, one of the things you hear is that they feel like it's a patchwork quilt. That, you know, every couple of weeks my son brings home another piece from another book to try and put it all together. and. Our teachers have done an outstanding job trying to make that patchwork quilt fit our students, and they've gone above and beyond, and your team has as well. But I think 
one of the strengths of the system is that there's one element. And so in you're in sixth grade, there's a book. And when you're in seventh grade, there's a book. And I love that the students can take their books home because we hear that all the time. How can I get a textbook so I can see what my child's learning or understand or help them or they can't bring it home because it might even just be online. So I think there's a lot of strengths in um, having this aligned and then having a consumable textbook. And I've seen this. Some of you have worked with middle school students before as well. I mean, they're, they struggle to remember to bring their ID to school, <laughs> much less their, their notebook and their book and the five other things. So to have one thing that they can carry and it has all their notes in it and they take it home and they bring it back, that's, that's so amazing. It's going to be so great for our kids. Um, and then I also, that's the first time I've seen the information about the online um, in detail, but I've heard from different people in the district about that, I think that's gonna be outstanding. A system that, you know, that's a strength that we don't have now, a system that determines how your student is doing and helps guide their learning and also provides that information to a teacher so a teacher can see where they're sh struggling and then um, help them know how to correct that. And right now, most of the online curriculum we have in math is just a yes or no. You got it right or you didn't. And so you didn't get that one right, so we'll take that one off the list. Now you have three choices. Oh, you didn't get that one right, now you have two choices. Now you have a really good chance of getting it right and getting some credit for your homework, but you didn't really learn what you needed. And so I think the system will be smarter and help our students really understand what they're doing. So, um, and I, I also just wanna say, I know this isn't all you, but you and your team and the leadership you provided in this process is outstanding. I think um, the way that you tried to look at this with the, taking the data first, seeing where we were, and then taking the time to do multiple pilots with teachers and really hear what they had to say and involve parents, which I don't know if we've done that recently, but how smart is that to say, let's get a stakeholder that's really important here. So thank you for your service. And with that, I would like to move that we take the recommended action. And I'm excited too. <laughs> okay, we do have some more comments, Barbara. Okay. I'm on the last page and very interested in professional development. I see this as quite a laborious process as we go through getting ready for every classroom, every teacher, and they have the correct information. As I look at the last, the, Car the Carnegie implementation, I see what I can make in my own mind a plan. And I think that's what you've done. Yes. But then when I go down to the three paragraphs, particularly the middle one, an aligned and cohesive K-12 curriculum, especially a middle school and high school, is essential for student and teacher success. And the only thing I think about that, there's got to be some way to get kids excited about math. Not that statement I read, but there's a big excitement somewhere, and soon it'll pay off for them. But I really feel we have to have professional development. I agree. I mean, without it, we'll be missing out. I agree. And my background is literacy. And so if I can get excited about this, <laughs> I think I can help kids. So you're telling us about others. yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just a couple of quick questions, just so that I'm clear. <laughs> the, the online resources, does Carnegie update their resources periodically so that there's new and different kinds of things on there? Do you know how often they refresh that site? I'm not for sure how often that is refreshed, but the practice portion that our students would be using is aligned with standards and it identifies specifically skills and areas for individual students to work on. So as students begin to master certain skills, it will begin to advance, advance, and, advance and move them. As far as some of the other resources that are available to our teachers, that is something that we have had discussion with Carnegie that as that is being updated, that our teachers also have that updated information. And so whether it's updated additions that with the curriculum or updates to different type of resources that are available online, but that has been 
a discussion we've had with them and they've been very supportive in making that work for us. Very good. Uh, second question. Uh, the, it, it's real clear that these resources are available for high school starting with algebra, but are they available for the middle school pieces, 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th to this online resource piece? Yes, it's available for all of our students. Okay, so it starts at 6th and runs all the way through. All the way through. Very good. Thank you. I'm seeing no other comments, and we do have a motion on the floor. The motion was made by Joy and seconded by Jeff. <coughs> I'm sorry, what? Seconded. By Jeff. Please cast your vote. <laughs> Motion passes 7 0. Yay! <laughs> Next item, please. Under bond policy and operations, none submitted. Finance budget report. Administration will update the board on fiscal year 2018 budget development. This item provides an opportunity for the board's information and discussion. Okay, before we start with you, Susan, uh, Superintendent Allison had asked to say something and then I just walked right past that. So please finish up with the math. No problem. Um, uh, as uh, we're, we're getting ready for um, budget, I just want to uh, thank our pilot teachers, our numeracy group for their hard work in getting to this point in time. We have spent the last couple years trying to look at that K-12 alignment, and it has been a very difficult task. Um, part of it is, as you looked at the standards, and, and we talked about Common Core standards and then the Kansas CAN standards, every publisher in the world said they were aligned. And when you begin to do your due diligence, you find that very few were actually aligned. So the, the work that was necessary just to get to the point to select the materials that we would pilot and, and to really map out what do we want K through 12 because we need that continuum um, was a lot of hard work, and I want to thank them for, for their hard work um, in, in getting us to a point where I feel very confident as we move forward with our students' progression, um, just as, as we had focused on literacy, being able to focus on math now, and having uh, um, both uh, aligned on a K-12 basis. But that's, that's not easy, and it's ongoing work. It doesn't stop now. They'll continue to work around professional development and looking at the standards and analyzing the data because as our students progress, you know, where are they being successful, where are they not, and then making the, the types of decisions we need to, to be able to continue on that, that, uh, that continuum and that progression upward. So um, thanks again to our pilot teachers and uh, our numeracy group and everybody else that worked on that. Thank you. Uh, 